Carson as proof that Irish history is often complex. He was a Dublin-born Protestant and a member of the Trinity College Hurling Club. A hundred years ago today, he and almost half a million more signed the Ulster Covenant, opposing Westminster plans to give Ireland home rule. Carson's stance would ultimately lead to the creation of the Northern Ireland state. To the consternation of the then Westminster government, Carson's followers would defiantly import 100,000 guns from Germany. Many of them equated home rule with Rome rule. The place at Larn, where those weapons of Ulster Unionists were distributed, is now owned by the Catholic Order, the Cross and Passion Nuns. Tomorrow, tens of thousands are expected in Belfast to mark the centenary of the Ulster Covenant. The Orange Order is organising events. We certainly uh, won't be looking for any trouble, indeed we don't look for any trouble in any of our parades. If there is to be controversy, it could happen here. On July the 12th, Orange bands played provocative music when passing St. Patrick's Catholic Church. The Parades Commission subsequently prohibited marching bands from playing outside a church in August, but that direction was ignored. Rioting followed at interface areas. Tomorrow, 14 bands will be let past the church. They have agreed to just play hymns. Residents have been given permission to stage a dignified protest. It's a delicate compromise with no guarantee of success, but if it works, it could augur well for the string of centenary events coming down the tracks. Just like Carson, Mervyn Gibson, the man on the left, is one more example of the complexity of Irish history. A Presbyterian minister, a former RUC special branch officer, a prominent orange man. His roots are over the border in Letterkenny, County Donegal. Tommy Gorman, RTE News, Belfast.